It is an early lock kind of day across Major League Baseball with the main slate on FanDuel locking at 1.05 p.m. Eastern for today. So if you're listening to this after 1.05 p.m. Eastern, go check out our Masters podcast or the Daily ISO to get your DFS fix instead because lock has already set in for Major League Baseball. What we'll do today is break down the nine-game main slate on FanDuel to get you set for what should be a fun day as an afternoon baseball on FanDuel. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire here to dissect this nine-game main slate with locks up for 1.05 p.m. Eastern, for today let's dive into the weather notes for this slate the big one is in washington dc for the nationals and the rates weather 83 degrees with the winds out at 11 miles per hour that is a big upgrade for bats you can bet your bottom will be there in the stacking section it is 55 degrees at yankee stadium uh, with the winds in from center at 10 miles per hour that is a downgrade to batters upgrade for pitchers like Garrett cole and Aaron Nola. there is a good chance of rain in st louis for the braves and the cardinals though looks like the rain will eventually roll out around first pitch there could be a delay here but i bet they're able to play there eventually so check back on st louis for that it's cold in boston 43 degrees the winds are in from right at 13 miles per hour it's a downgrade to bats there and thunderstorms are possible in Chicago for the White Sox and Giants. Monitor that one because it could lead to issues there, given that there has been some severe weather around there recently, and there looks like there is some again today. So check back on Chicago and St. Louis to make sure those games will play. Other ones, uh, cold in the Yankee Stadium and Fenway Park, and then very, very nice in D.C., for some hitting out there. We'll dive into the pitching preview for today in just one second. But first, a reminder, as mentioned, we do have other podcasts here on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Our Masters podcast is up, breaking down roster construction, top guys in each player or in salary tier, and much more via myself and Brandon Gadula. Find that on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed, but also over on the FanDuel YouTube page. Tom Vecchio has you covered on the NBA side of things with the Daily ISO each and every weekday. So search for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe, and if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you are listening. Are you looking to have a stake in the Masters all weekend? Well, FanDuel has you covered with the PGA Mega Eagle Contest, which is now live. Test your knowledge of the PGA Tour by putting together a six-person lineup while staying under the salary cap and using FanDuel's live scoring feature. Follow along as you compete for a share of $750,000, with first place taking home $150,000 for just $15 in the entry fee. Whether it's household names like Tiger Woods, Scotty Scheffler, Jordan Spieth, or an underdog you may like, tea times are on April 6th. There are plenty of options for you to fill out a lineup as you compete for first place. Thursday will be here before you know it, so submit your lineups on FanDuel today. Eligibility restrictions apply. Go to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel app for more details. Pitching preview for this Wednesday main slate. Garrett Cole is the highest salary guy in FanDuel coming in at $11,100. Dylan sees a 10-8. We got Shane McClanahan coming in at 10-6. Corbin Burns is $10,200. Logan Webb is 10-1. Christian Javier against Tigers, $10,000. Jacob deGrom all the way down to 99. Aaron Nola is 97. Pablo Lopez with that new sweeper is 94. Jesus Lizardo, 9,000. With David Peterson, Mitch Keller, Eduardo Rodriguez, and Miles Mikolas as the others at $8,000 or higher. Now, when I turn to my strikeout projections for today, I have four guys with a strikeout projection of seven or higher. And three of those guys are at home. Those guys, um, the one guy who's not at home is Aaron Nola on the road against the Yankees. So we'll cross him off. The three guys at home are Jacob deGrom, Garrett Cole, and Christian Javier. I like all of them, but deGrom, especially with the discount, is going to be my top guy of the day. Now, he may be a tough sell after his debut where he got knocked around. Five runs, chased after three and two-thirds innings, just 73 pitches. The pitch count part of that was expected. We discussed this in opening day where I was not on him because I thought the pitch count might be low. Project him for 75. He went 73. The results were unlucky. He had seven strikeouts. It's a very good number. His velocity was good. It's down a bit from last year, but not a concerning amount. So 
I don't think that debut is bad, honestly. So if we put 90, 85% Jacob deGrom in this spot for less than $10,000, it's really hard not to like him. He's facing the Orioles, who have a pretty solid offense, honestly. They have a 108 WRC plus against righties, a 20% strikeout rate. I am not going to be on pitchers facing the Orioles super often, but DeGrom is different. Even with just an 85 pitch count projection, I have DeGrom's strikeout projection at 8.87. That is almost a full strikeout ahead of Cole. It is well ahead of everybody else as well. And we may get him at a reduced roster rate after the rough debut. I think that the salary indicates people may be skeptical of him. So I'll take that. Uh, DeGrom does enough for me to be my favorite option for today. So we're buying low on Jacob DeGrom. Probably not going to get him below 10,000 the rest of the year. So... I will take advantage while we are here. It is a tight battle between Cole and uh, Javier for second. I have Cole projected for more pitches, and his weather is more pitcher-friendly. But he gets the Phillies, whereas Javier gets the Tigers. I'm going to take that and go with Javier as my number two guy. A 79 WRC plus against righties for the Tigers with a 128 ISO. Both those are the worst in the slate by a significant margin. And Javier is a very good pitcher. He continued using his slider a good amount in his first start this year, and he's been doing that for 10 starts now. In that 10th start sample, he has a 3.11 skill interactive ERA with a 32% strikeout rate, and despite throwing more sliders, a pitch that can let up hard contact in general, he's letting up just a 29% hard hit rate in this time. When you let up as many fly balls as Javier does, that's a huge, huge key. Now, in the, in the first start for Javier, he let up three runs in five innings, not the best results, but he also had a 23.2% swing and strike rate, which is a true sicko level number. Now, Javier is facing a much softer offense. I have Javier projected for 7.2 strikeouts, which is below Cole, but I like the other stuff he brings to the table enough to put Javier a hair above Cole. So to me, the, the studs are ranked DeGrom 1, Javier 2, Cole 3, We'll talk about Shane McClanahan and things to watch. Now, looking at the guys with salaries of $9,000 or lower, there are only two I think worth considering. And honestly, I'd rather get above them anyway. But uh, the two guys who are values who I think are viable are Jesus Lazardo at $9,000, David Peterson at $85. Peterson could get smacked around by the Brewers. Uh, we saw them do damage against Max Scherzer last night, to my chagrin. And Lazardo is at home. So that's going to give Lazardo the edge for me. Now he's facing the Twins. I don't love that matchup. The Twins have a 119 WRC plus versus a lefty since the start of last year. 21% strikeout rate. So this is more about the talent in the pitcher than it is about the matchup. Lazardo walked a couple too many guys in his first start, but no runs on two hits in five and two thirds innings. So he's picking up where he left off last year. After returning from his injury, Lazardo threw fewer sliders, and threw more sinkers. I typically hate that. Sinkers suck for daily fantasy. Sliders are very good. So the trade-off there should be a massive negative. But in that time, Lazardo still has a 28% strikeout rate. His swing and strike rate against the Mets in that debut was 16.5%. So even with a lot of sinkers, Lazardo has been nasty. He has double-digit strikeouts twice in this stretch. He went 91 pitches in his first start this year, so I have Lazardo projected at 95, which puts his strikeout projection at 6.37. That is plenty enough to make him viable at $9,000. So I still prefer the true studs, but Lazardo, pretty fun. I would say just above this range, if we're talking about the value plays, Lazardo at 9,000. You do get uh, Pablo Lopez in the same game. It's a revenge game for Pablo Lopez. He added that uh, that new sweeper and looked awesome with that pitch. I think the whiff fair was like 70%. I don't know. It was absurd. Uh, very good pitch. So if you want to go Lopez at 94, I will not talk you out of it. I think he's intriguing there. But again, DeGrom is 99, Javier 10,000. They will be my preferred targets for today in Daily Fantasy. As far as stacking goes, I was okay on opening day being lower on the Braves facing Patrick Corbin last week because it was a colder game than the others. Figured they'd be very, very popular. There were a lot of factors that pushed me a bit lower on them than consensus. This week, that is not the case. As mentioned, 83 degrees, winds blowing out. 
I think that gives us the green light to load up on the Tampa Bay Rays here. Corbin struggled in that game, which is a continuation of what we've seen here for the past couple of years. He went three innings, but a four runs, three earned, uh, three walks to three strikeouts, and seven out of 14 balls in play were hard hit. Three of them were barreled. He didn't let up any home runs, but I think that might have been because of the weather more than anything else. I think that confirms we can feel good using batters facing Corbin still, um, you know, even after an offseason of potentially trying to change. We're up to nine starts on Corbin since he basically ditched his forcing fastball and don't think he used it at all last week. But in that time, he has let up a 43% hard hit rate, which is highest in the slate. The Rays hit lefties pretty well with a 119 WRC plus. So I am more than happy to load up on the Rays in this spot. With the pitching options for today, uh, around $10,000, I do want to try to save some salary, which means Isaac Paredes might be in every lineup. His salary is $2,300. He has a 263 ISO against lefties since the start of last year with a 42% fly ball rate. He hit third in both their games against lefties so far. So Paredes won't steal, which is definitely a downside, but the power here is very good. Uh, so I love Paredes at 23. makes it easier to get to Randy Rosarena, Wander Franco, while still spending a pitcher. Franco gets a power bump against lefties. Rosarena does too. So the Rays, despite being very popular, are my favorite stack of the day today. The second stack, a little bit tougher, and it does force us to use an offense that is struggling. And that's the Astros. The offense... Not as good as it has been in years past, as expected. There's much less depth on this team right now, but they still have some good options, and I think we can turn to them today. Astros are facing Eduardo Rodriguez. He was pretty mixed in his debut this year. He went five and one-third innings, let up three earned runs. He had five strikeouts compared to two walks, and that came against the Rays. Again, a pretty good team against lefties, so not bad at all. I wouldn't be itchy to stack against Rodriguez most days, but it's a pretty good slate for pitching. They're a good team against lefties, the Astros are, which pushes me to consider it here. In that game, Rodriguez let up a 43% hard hit rate, which pushes his hard hit rate allowed up to 37% in games where he has thrown more changeups. But the better teams, the good teams he has faced, have hit the ball really hard in that sample. I still think the Astros should count in that discussion. They have seven guys on the roster who had, who have a 100 WRC plus or higher against lefties since the start of last year in a hundred plus plate appearance, which does not count Mauricio Dubon, who has 96. So even among just the guys who are left on this roster and who are active and healthy, they can hit. So the Astros may not be as good, but I do think that they're good enough to be in play here. So the Astros, to me a team I am very willing to use in daily fantasy for today. That thinned out lineup should ensure that Chaz McCormick plays, which I will take. Uh, McCormick been hitting sixth for the most part recently. He has a 219 ISO against lefties since the start of last year with a low walk rate. He's already up to three stolen bases this year too, so seems to be adding that to his repertoire. So I love that. Jeremy Pena, Kyle Tucker, both willing to run against lefties. So that's a nice add for their value. And I think that... We should feel good about the Astros here, despite the fact they are not quite the offense they used to be. The final stack is going to force us into something suboptimal. We can't have great weather, can't have a great matchup and check all those boxes. We had to concede something somewhere. I am more willing to budge on a matchup than on weather. So I'm going to go with the Braves against Miles Nicholas, a guy I don't typically stack against. I've been more willing to recently. It's because Nicholas is dropping his sinker usage. It's happened across his past 15 outings. And in that time, Nicholas has let up a 35% fly ball rate. That goes up to 39% when you look at just lefties. The hard hit rate allowed is 37%. And we did see Nicholas struggle on opening day. He went three and a third innings. He let up five runs on 10 hits, two barrels, seven hard hit balls on 14 balls in play. It is different from what Nicholas used to be, where he was suppressing hard contact better than a lot of guys in the league. He's now facing the Braves, who have a 196 ISO against righties and a 112 WRC+. plus. I think they can get to him here. I think we should be willing to stack against Nicholas here, despite the fact it's not typically something we would do. And there are plenty of factors pushing this in the direction, especially on a slate with so many good pitchers in 
or so much bad weather as well for hitting. Within this brain stack, we'll prioritize the lefties. Certainly not easy with the salaries, but Ozzy Albies manageable at 32, Michael Harris 35. As with other times, an inclination towards the lefties will not put me on Eddie Rosario at $2,200. Kind of a bridge too far for me. Don't see a ton of upside there. So I'll need value elsewhere to make this work, but I am willing to give it a shot here. So the Braves, to me, the third stack behind the Rays and the Astros. Things to watch. Did want to go back to Shane McClanahan and touch on why I'm not as high on him here. I'm guessing people will be pretty jazzed about him. He did exceed my pitch count expectations last week, going 87, but I've got him projected for 90 tonight. There's not a lot of strikeouts for McClanahan recently. He's been using more forcing fastballs his past 10 starts, and in that time, he has a 20% strikeout rate. He's top six strikeouts just twice in those 10 starts, so I'd want more than that here for his salary. It is a good matchup, uh, but it's not great weather for pitching either, so... I won't get to him myself. Don't blame me if you do, but we'll not be getting to McClanahan personally. Grayson Rodriguez is making his debut for the Orioles for today, facing the Rangers, a 95 WRC plus against righties. Not a huge power team. Rodriguez, really good in AAA last year. So that's enough where I won't stack against him. But I've got him projected for just 83 pitches. He went 75 in his uh, one AAA start before coming up. So not on my radar as a pitcher either. I think more so just a literal thing to watch in this things to watch section. Rodriguez should be fun, uh, but not a guy I uh, have a ton of interest in for DFS for today. Finally, as mentioned, we have to make consolations with stacks for today, whether it be weather, matchup, something else. I might have to make a bad weather consolation and use the Pirates for today if I need value. They're facing Corey Kluber, who got punched in the mouth in his first start. A lot of hard contact, got chased in that game early, let up two home runs. The Pirates' salaries are low. I don't want to do it because the weather stinks. They're not a great team, but I may be forced into it. So the Pirates, a consideration for stacking if you want some more bats, but would rank them below the Braves, the Rays, and the Astros. Let's finish up here with some dinger calls for today. The boring one, got to go against Patrick Corbin and go Randy Arosarena. I think he's plus 360 to hit a homer over a FanDuel Sportsbook justified a lot of a lot of power for him against lefties a lot more loft for him against lefties and otherwise he will steal bases which is not great for dinger calls but good for dfs so randy arosa reina very fun in that regard the fun one is jazz mccormick he's not like the most outlandish recommendation because he's in um in a park with a short porch and left facing a left-handed pitcher place of the astros stuff like that but i like Chaz mccormick so home run calls for today randy arosa reina and Chaz McCormick. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shot. If you want some betting thoughts on uh, the slate for today, did go through that. Uh, some strikeout props, home run props, and uh, a couple money lines I like over on covering the spread. So find that by searching for covering the spread. If you want some more daily fantasy podcasts, again, all right here in the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed. So go subscribe there wherever you get your podcasts. And again, if you like what you hear, leave us a five star rating. If you have any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups and have fun watching some day baseball for today. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.